Not going to talk much this time? No. Okay, perfect. Not talking at all. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Gosh, dog it. 26? I think it's 26. Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Jared Escalada, and this is episode 26 of Thrive TV. And today, we are going to talk about the kettlebell swing. Now, if you've watched our previous episodes, you know that we have already gone over a hinge. And a hinge is a basic human movement that you hinge at your hips, not bend at your knees. And the kettlebell swing is a hinge movement. However, the kettlebell swing is easy to mess up. It's also very popular, so I wanted to make sure that we went over this specific exercise so that you're getting the best out of it that you can and getting what you are supposed to out of it. Also, I want to make sure that you're not getting hurt doing the exercise because, again, if you do it wrong, it's easy to mess up. So, first of all, what the kettlebell swing is not, and I'm gonna, in a second we're going to have Sharon show you some not kettlebell swings, and then we're going to go through some drills that you can do to learn your kettlebell swing, and then show you what a kettlebell swing actually is. So, what a kettlebell swing is not, is not a squat, all right? A lot of people have trouble understanding that. They want to bend a lot through their knees and not hinge as much through their hips. So they're trying to push the weight up with their knees instead of, um, instead of swing the weight with their hips. It's also not a shoulder raise. So they want to push with their knees and then pull with their shoulders instead of letting their hips do all the moving. Okay? So the goal of the kettlebell swing is to develop your glutes and your hammies, so the back side of you. Also, you're going to get a lot of core development if you stop the weight correctly and if you're trying to hold your bell uh, as low as you can at the top of the swing. So the point is not, it's not a quad dominant exercise, it's not a shoulder exercise, and you also don't want to have it come way up. That's another thing a lot of people do, which is okay if you want to do, if you want to have your bell come high, that's fine with you and that's up to you. However, and I'll have her show a couple like this although I, I just don't want to hurt herself. I don't think she will, but whenever you have the bell come way up, a lot of times what happens is you go into extension like this, and a lot of our clients have already said it, even if the bell gets here, which isn't terribly high, but if it gets chest tight or higher, they go into extension and they feel it in their back. So that's why we always teach to stop the kettlebell as fast as you can, turn your core on, stop your bell as fast as you can, and then attack your zipper again. So. Like I said, the first thing that we're gonna do, and Sharon was demonstrating a couple of her knot swings before, so it's a good thing that she's having, problem, having trouble showing her knot swing. So the first thing Sharon's gonna do is just five knot swings. So this is how a swing should not look, or some similar variation thereof, all right? So notice she's getting a lot of bend in her knees. She's pulling the bell up with her arms. She's getting a lot of movement. Her bell's going underneath her knees. That's good. That's fine. That's plenty. Good. That's, that's I good. Like I don't like those kinds of swings. So she's pulling a lot with her arms. Her bell's going below her knees, which is going to put a lot of pressure on her back. Also, she's dropping her hips and bailing her hips before her bell gets to her zipper. So what I mean by attack your zipper is you don't move until your hands get to your zipper. So once your hands get to your zipper, then you bail and then you come back up. What happens whenever you come down and you start to bail too soon, the weight is away from you. So the, that weight being far away from you is putting a lot more pressure on your low back, which you don't need, which is why people have trouble doing swings. Instead of keeping it in close to you, when you pull it down and you get to your zipper and then you bail and then pop quick, then the weight's in close to you and that pressure doesn't go on your back and your core takes, and your core glutes and hammies take the brunt of the, uh, the weight. So we're gonna go over two drills and then go over the, the starting and ending position of the swing and then go through a few swings to get you guys to see what we're talking about here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is set Sharon up in front of a box. Now, this doesn't have to be a box necessarily. It can be in front of a wall, anything that you can reach back and touch. So feet are gonna be hip width apart. This is how we always start with our hinge position, whether it's a deadlift, a, um, a swing, or any other hinge that we're gonna do. Feet hip width apart, you wanna be about uh, three to five inches in front of the box or in front of the wall or whatever you decide to choose. Now we're gonna start with our arms extended at uh, the top of your swing. Now this is the top of her swing and I'm not gonna let her come any higher. 
All right, we want this to be the top of your swing because remember, if it comes too high, she's gonna start going into extension and she's gonna put a lot of pressure down here on her low back. So we wanna make sure that she stops right here. Her core turns on and we're gonna go over a drill for that in a second. But we wanna make sure she stops right here, no higher than her chest, preferably sternum, bottom of your sternum. All right, and now what she's gonna do is she's slowly gonna attack her zipper. So once her hands get to her zipper, she's gonna bail her hips, tap her box, and then come back up into her start position, okay? for this drill, not start position for the swing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go through three of those nice and slow. Pause at the bottom for me, just like you did last time. Good, now notice at the bottom, her upper body is just about parallel to the floor. All right, she's got a good hinge in her hips here. She has soft knees, her knees are not overly bent. Good hinge in her hips, about, about a 90 degree angle in her hips, okay? And her, she's attacking her zipper with her hands. Go ahead and come back up to the top, good. And then she comes to the top. Now when she comes to the top, she's not overly extended. Her core is turned on. Her hips are all the way through, okay? So she's squeezing her glutes tight to finish off with her hips. And also her knees are straight. So while you're extending your hips, you're also straightening your knees as hard as you can. All right, go ahead and give me one more just like that. Let's pause at the bottom, good. Soft knees, good hinge in the hips. Attacking your zipper at the bottom. Upper body is almost parallel to the floor. Good, come up to the top. Good, glutes at the top. Squeezing your, uh, extending your knees. Core is tight, so the bell does not get too high. Now, to learn this part, the top part, that's just as hard as learning how to hinge your hips correctly. So, in order for us to learn that, what I'm gonna have her do is get on her back in a hip bridge position. Toes are gonna to be off the ground. Good, just like that. And I'm gonna have her extend her, ooh, you wanna to touch, play footsies with your. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Arms are gonna be extended again, just like they were here, at the same height. So, uh, bottom of your sternum, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put pressure on her hands. And what that's gonna do, well, I guess before that, I'm gonna make sure that she knows that, don't let me, push you back, yeah. okay? We've already done this drill, so she knows what she's doing. So I'm gonna put pressure on her hands and she's not gonna let me move her. So right now I'm pushing on her and she's trying to push me back down to the floor. And from here, I want her to extend her hips and bring her hips up and squeeze her glutes at the top for five, four, three, two, one, down. Good, bring them up again. Five, four, three, two, one, down. One more time, bring them up again, five, four, three, two, one, down. Now, two things that this is doing. Number one with the hands, as I'm putting pressure on her and telling her not to move me, this is, how, this is the feeling that she should get at the top of her swing when she's trying to stop her bell from going too high and then attacking her zipper again at the bottom. So this pressure feeling that she's getting, which is turning on her abs, okay? Everything's turned on here right now, is giving her the same feeling that she's gonna get whenever her bell gets to where it needs to be and then she starts to pull it back down. Now when I tell her to bring her hips up, go ahead and bring your hips up. This is her extended position in the swing, okay? So once her hips are all the way through, this is the top of her swing, her hips are through, so she's finished off with her glutes and then she comes back down to relax to start another set, okay? So hands here, extended out from the bottom of your sternum, good pressure, all right? Once you get a partner to do this with, make sure, I don't really know where I was going with that, but make sure your hands are about uh, sternum height. They're getting good pressure on your hands and not, you're not letting them push you. This is also a good core exercise, so really, you can use this for a couple of things. But, and then whenever you're coming up to the top, make sure you're pausing for five seconds at the top, okay? With your, with your hips up and your glutes tight, okay? So once you've done these two drills and you feel like you have your hinge down and then you feel like you have your height down, you need to figure out, you need to know how to start and stop your swing. All right, so what a lot of people wanna do whenever they start their swing is stand right over the bell. Go ahead and give me a couple of these, sorry. Stand right over the bell and then they wanna pick the bell up and then they wanna get it, go, get it going with the momentum of their arms and their hips. All right, that's good, thank you. <clears throat> probably not bad in the sense that 
you, you shouldn't get hurt doing that, although it does increase the likelihood of you getting hurt. Um, but it's inefficient and you're wasting energy picking up and getting momentum going for your swing. So uh, what we want to do to get started is set up about a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet back, depending on how long you are, from your bell. Feet hip width apart. We're going to start at the top. Now, she's going to hinge at her, hip, at her hips. This is what we've already learned with our box drill. Okay? She's going to reach out for her bell. Okay? And, and we'll do uh, one and stop, one and stop. Sharon, okay? And then from here, she's gonna hike, and then stop, and reset, okay? Hinge, hands out, hike, stop, and reset. Give me one more like that. Good hinge, hands out, hike, good, and reset. Now, you notice I said hike. So if you understand American football at all, what the center does is hike the ball between his legs, right? So if he has two hands on the ball, he's going to go like this and he's going to hike. So your first swing envision hiking, this, hiking the bell off the ground in between your legs. All right? And then all she's doing after that is setting the bell back down on her last swing where it, where she, where it started, okay, on her first swing. So go ahead and give me three more like that. Good hinge in her hips, hands on the bell, hike, and setting it down where she started. Okay, good hinge in her hips, hands on the bell, hike, pop, and back where she started. One more time, hinge, hands, hike, pop, and back where she started. Okay, so the hike is your first swing, and then however many swings you do in between, and then setting the bell back down where you started is your last swing. So this is a drill that you should do. You should do sets of five with this, all right? Once you can do three sets of five comfortably, then you can start doing consecutive swings, okay? So once you can do three sets of five of starting the swing, all right, and setting, and setting the bell down in the same position, then you can move on to consecutive swings. And we're gonna start with just three sets of five of clusters. So we're gonna do three sets of five straight, reset. Three sets of five straight, reset, and then one more set, three set of five straight, okay? So you're gonna get about 20 seconds or so of rest in between each set of five, and that's gonna be one cluster, all right? You're gonna go on and do something else, and then you're gonna do it again. So we're not gonna do all of that. All I, want you to do <laughs> all I want you to do is a set of five, and then rest, and then we'll do another set of five, okay? Good hinge in her hips, hands out on the bell, hike, Notice her bell's not coming too high. She's stopping it at her sternum. She has to turn her core on and able to do that. She's attacking her zipper at the bottom. She gets five, she's, she resets. We're gonna wait about, well, five seconds. <laughs> and then we're gonna go again. And she's gonna attack her zipper at the bottom. Don't let her bell get too high. Good hinge in the hips. Once she gets five, she's gonna reset. And then she would repeat that one more time to finish off her cluster. All right, so you're gonna do three of those clusters before you start doing really long consecutive swings. Now, here sometimes we work up to 20 swings. Uh, I've seen people go up to 50 swings, which is a lot of swings, but if you do it right, it's not gonna hurt. Like, once you become really efficient at this movement, it's really just moving. I don't wanna say it's really just moving because it's really tiring, but once you become efficient at it, your body understands and 50 swings is doable without over exhaustion, exhaustion, but that's not anything that you want to do within the first six months of learning how to do this. All right, so just to go over our drills again, or just to cover everything again, so number one, don't bend your knees too much, okay? Good hinge in your hips, you're not pulling at all with your shoulders, with your box, uh, with your box drill, you can do three sets of five, three sets of 10, whatever you wanna do with this because it doesn't require any type of effort. However, it's the pattern that's important. So ingraining the pattern is important and building on top of that after that. So you can do however many sets of this that you want. Do this for a week, two weeks, however, until you're comfortable with your hinge, all right? And then along with that, you can do your hip bridge drill with your arms extended getting good pressure on your hands, okay? Bring your hips up at the top. You wanna to do three sets of five to 10, so start with five and add one a week until you get to 10, 
all right? Do that for as long as you're comfortable. You can do these drills always. These two drills you can do always, your box drill and your hip bridge drill, all right? And then you could always work on your start stop on your swing. So once you are comfortable with your box and your hip bridge drill, then you wanna work on your start stop, okay? And you wanna do sets of five. So you wanna do three sets of five. You can superset that with other things. Do that for a week or two until you're comfortable with it and then start your clusters. So you're gonna do a set of five, rest, set of five, rest, and another set of five. And that's gonna get you ready to start doing sets of 15, 20, and 25. All right, sounds like a lot of swings, and it is a lot of swings, but when you become efficient at it, number one, the likelihood of you getting hurt is gone. Like this, you should not have any pressure on your back when you do a swing, there should be zero. So if you have some, you're, you're doing it wrong. Um, and breaking it down into clusters instead of automatically jumping into sets of 15 and 20 is gonna help you build up to that. So, uh, Sharon, thanks very much for all of your help. You're welcome. We interrupted her workout today, so thank you, Sharon. If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to hit us on Twitter, at The Thrive Pack. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Good. Nice. Throw a little improv in there. Um, yeah, I thought that was good.